Good evening, everyone. So today I'm going to have a go at explaining how a network works using an analogy that I've seen used by people before. And I think the reason I've seen this analogy used so many times is that it's a really good analogy to explain how a network works. Uh, better than most people seem to have noticed, really. And because of this, every time I've seen it used, I've always thought, oh, they could have expanded on that. They could have gone a little bit further. So that's what I'm going to try to do now. This analogy is between how a network works and how the postal system works. So I want you to imagine for me two friends, uh, Thomas and Charles. So Thomas and Charles are playing board games via post. So they have a game of drafts, a game of chess and a game of back, back, backgammon on the go. Today, Charles wants to send a move for his game of chess and a move for his game of drafts to Thomas. We will focus on the chess move that he wishes to make. Charles is in his second home in Edinburgh, where he plays his postal games from, and Thomas lives in London, in Pudding Lane, with the postcode of EC39FL. And Charles wants to move his king from E1 to D1. So what happens is Charles writes his move down on a piece of paper and puts this into an envelope and marks the envelope with the word chess on it. He does this for his draft move as well and then puts them both into an envelope where he puts Thomas's full address on the outside. Charles then has his butler to deliver this to the post box. So you can see from here the analogy in pictures. So the action to take is uh, Charles writing down his move and putting it into an envelope and then he puts it into another envelope with the address on and then the envelope eventually goes to the post box and gets picked up by the postman and taken to the local sorting office. So once at the local sorting office, the postal workers will look at the envelope. They will firstly check the street address to see if that street address belongs to the area that the local postman delivered to. If so, they will place it into a queue for the relevant postman to collect and deliver the next day. This area will be identified by any street that has the postcode that includes the characters EH99 and anything with one. So if that was the case, it would just get delivered by the postman out to the house in the local area. The next thing the postal worker will do is to see if the postcode begins with EH99 and then anything. If this is the case, then the letter will get put in a queue, which will then get picked up by a van and then taken to one of the other local sorting offices with the start of the postcode EH99. However, if the postal worker checks a letter and the postcode doesn't begin with EH99 anything, then the letter is not for a destination within the city distribution area. So then the letter would get put into a queue, which would then go on a truck and then would get sent to the regional distribution depot. So once the letter gets to the regional distribution depot, the postal workers are no longer interested in the original street address of the letter. They're only trying to get this to the relevant regional distribution depot for the postcode EC3 or to London. However, to get there, they do need the street address of the next depot along the way. So in this case, either Manchester or Leeds. You can see that there are two different ways to get from Edinburgh to London on this map, either by going through Leeds or Manchester. The truck driver can think of this in two ways. The route to London through Leeds may be faster overall to get to London, but to get from Edinburgh to Manchester, is a lot quicker than getting from Edinburgh to Leeds. So you could look at the, the route as a whole, or you could just look at getting to the next depot as quickly as possible. Um, so the decisions that sort of go into this are based on a few variables. So you, would, you may pick one route over another due to the speed of the motorway, uh, how many lanes each motorway has, uh, what amount of traffic would be on the motorway at any given time, 
and how likely that motorway is to have an accident on there. So once the next depot has been chosen, the letter is placed within a cage with all the other letters due for that depot and that cage then would have the street address of the next depot on it. So the driver chooses the Manchester route and delivers the cage to this depot. The poster workers here see the letter and look at the postcode and see that it's EC3 9 or London. So the letter isn't for the Manchester area, the letter is just passing through Manchester to get to London. The next step for the letter is then to be delivered to the London depot. So for this the driver will now need the street address of the London depot. Once the letter arrives at the London depot, the last part of the postcode is checked and then sent to the relevant local depot. Once here, the street address of Thomas is now relevant again and the letter can be delivered by the postman. So Thomas sees that the letter is addressed to him, opens it up, then selects the envelope called chest to see what the next move is. He then reads the instructions sent by Charles and makes the move. Okay, so that's a brief overview of how the postal system works. So now let's take a look at the network and the similarities between them. So let's take the same two people. Charles and Thomas. They are now playing online chess. So Charles makes a move, moving his king this time from d1 to c1. This instruction from the application is told to the chess game. The chess game knows the IP address of Thomas's machine that the instruction is for. Charles PC knows that to get to this address, it will need to go via its local switch, so sends the packet to there. What's happening here is a process called encapsulation. You can use the postal service analogy here. The instruction to move the chess pieces belong to the application layer of the TCP IP protocol stack. The application type is identified by port numbers either TCP or UDP port numbers. These port numbers belong to the transport layer of the TCP IP protocol stack. You can think of this as the instructions being put into an envelope and the envelope being marked up with the port numbers or the type of game being played in the post office analogy. This process is repeated with, with the, the packet moving down the stack until it comes onto the network. So the next step of this is to identify where the next hop in the network is and what the MAC address is for that. This is like a street, street address of the local sorting office being identified and delivered to the next destination in the chain. Once the packet is on the network, this process is repeated the local address is changed to get the packet to its next destination with the end goal of getting the packet to the final destination of the IP address. So what happens is that as the packet moves through the network, the IP address will stay the same, but the MAC address will change from hop to hop. So once the packet reaches the router, previously would have been the, the regional distribution depot. It's faced with the same dilemma as the letter. There are two routes to get from Edinburgh to London. Again, there are two ways to look at this. The fastest way to get from Edinburgh to London as a whole, or the fastest way to get to the next depot. The variables that would go into the network would be latency, which can be thought of as the speed of the motorway. Uh, the bandwidth, which can be thought of as the amount of lanes on the motorway. Uh, also, the amount of traffic on the motorway, which is called congestion in the networking world. And the 
likelihood of an accident being on that particular motorway, which is what we call reliability. So these decisions and variables are factors that make up the different routing protocols. Uh, the main point being here that there's always an alternate route and if one link is down, then we can always go another way. So the packet is forwarded much in the same way as it is on the local side. So it, it uses a local address of, of Manchester's router and then Manchester uses a local address of uh, the London router, uh, but the IP address of the destination is still the same. OK, so once the packet reaches the distribution switch in London, uh, or the city distribution depot, as it was in the, in the post office analogy, the process is reversed uh, until the package is delivered to the local switch. Uh, here it is delivered to Thomas's PC via his MAC address. And then the packet goes through a process of de-encapsulation. So it starts to strip off the the MAC address, it strips off the IP address, it strips off the, the transport layer information and then delivers the data within the packet to the application itself, which in this case would be the instruction to move um, Charles's King from D1 to C1. So to recap then, um, the links in a network can be thought of as roads. So this would be your layer one of the TCP IP protocol stack. Uh, MAC addresses can be thought of as street addresses uh, with house numbers. Uh, private IPs can be thought of as the first and some of the second parts of your postcode, which identify an area. Um, so this would be your layer three in the networking world um and, and would align to the sort of lan or the local area network uh, public ips can be thought of as just solely the first part of your postcode um again this is a layer three but this is you know generally termed as the wide area network the type of service or the transport layer can be thought of as the the type of game being played and the application layer itself is the game itself and the instructions of what to do. Hopefully this has given you a, an understanding of how traffic flows in the network. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, subscribe to help the channel. Remember to hit the notification bell to get alerts about my new videos.